So I hope you have some energy left for uh, what I would kind of call like a kind of um, mixture about uh, 78 RPM records and the production, 1950s culture, polit political history, and the inter interplay between music and political ideologies. These are all some of my favorite topics. And today I would like to talk about it by introducing this record company, Avantid, which was run, run by the Swedish Communist Youth League in the 1950s. Uh, the releases of Avanti only included about 50, 78 RPM records, and they never gained much attention outside the communist movement. But nevertheless, these records uh, tell interesting stories about political and ideological pur purposes as the driving force of running a record company. And by answering questions like what music was released by Avanti, what political content did they assign to this music, and whom did they want to reach out to? One will also see that production of gramophone records could be used as a way of, of producing political ideology. Uh, to understand the inter interplay between music and political ideolog ideologies, I have used a scheme constructed by the British musicologist Georgia Bourne, or is it Georgina? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm Georgina. Georgina. Uh, my mistake, but you know, <laughs> you know who I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, she calls it the five dimensions of mutual mediation of music and politics. I won't go into details, but these categories are all useful to analyze the Avanti label, uh, especially the first two of them. As I, as I will show, Avanti was both a way of involving music in political and social movements, as well as an attempt to reimagine the institutional and organizational forms supporting the production and distribution of music. <clears throat> So why did the Swedish Communist Youth League start a record company and why did they do it at this specific time in the early 1950s? Within the Swedish labor movement, there was a long tradition, tradition of using song and music in political activities. But with Avanti, it, it was the first time that an organization affiliated with a political party formed their own record company in Sweden, as far as I know. And there's probably many reasons why they did it, but I will focus on what I think is the three most essential. Um, first of all, I think it was a new way to reach out to young people. In the early 1950s, gramophone records had become an established mass medium for producing and selling music, and the buyers were to be found among the younger population. Seen in this context, forming a record company was an innovative way of reaching out to the record buying youth with a political message. At the same time as Avanti was formed, the Swedish Communist Youth League tried to broaden its activities by reforming itself into a new organization called Democratic Youth, which at least officially was meant to be independent from any political party, including the Swedish Communist Party. The inspiration came, among others, from the Freie Deutsche Jugend movement in East Germany. And the idea was to unite Sweden's youth behind what was considered as common interests, such as their rights to works and leisure activities, and in the struggle for the world peace. Social activities such as sports, dance, and music was supposed to be both a way for young people to get together, as well as an entrance to political discussions. A particular community that was prioritized was what in, in Sweden is called Spisargrupper. <laughs> and uh, it was a kind of informal gatherings where young people met in groups to listen to records. And an internal document from the Communist Youth League specifies that forming these kinds of Spisargrupper should be prioritized for democratic youth activities. The instruction was though that record listening should be combined with political discussions. If one listened to jazz records, for instance, one should also discuss the commercialization of jazz music, the racism in the United States, uh, in the United States and uh, how Afro-American musicians was exploited by the American music industry. Record listening would thus function as a gateway to political discussions. And by forming a record company, the, the communists could also use their own record releases to set an ideolo ideological agenda in political activities and discussions. Uh, I do also believe that inspiration. I do also believe that inspiration from other record companies was of importance. Avanti was inspired by foreign record companies such as Eterna in East Germany, Folkways in the United States, and Topic Records in England. 
And these were record companies that in several cases were run by communists or by left-wing sympathizers. But I do also believe that changes in the Swedish recording industry was of importance. Until then, the record market was dominated by a handful of multinational companies such as Columbia, Polyphone and Odeon, who had started local manufacturing in Sweden. There was also one large domestic record company named Sonora that mostly released commercial popular music. But the end of the 1940s, another kind of record companies was established on the Swedish market. In 1949, the independent labels Metronome and Gazelle was founded. They were formed by young jazz enthusiasts who ran the companies from idealistic viewpoints as much as by com commercial considera considerations. They had no previous experience from the record industry, but nevertheless, they managed to get exclusive right to release Americans' recordings with such as uh, Charlie Parker and Stan Getz. This was possible much thanks to personal networks within jazz circles. And for Avanti, I'm quite sure that this was a source of inspiration who showed that it was possible to start a record company without, without experience and backing from the major recording industry. A detail of importance is also that in Sweden, there was an import ban against foreign produced records after the Second World War. To the major record companies, there was no problem. They already had their own production in Sweden. But music that was controversial for aesthetic or political reasons was of no interest to these companies. Therefore, foreign record companies outside the multinational industry, they needed independent labels such as Metronome, Gazelle and Avanti to be able to launch their recordings in Sweden. And while these jazz yes labels, Metronome and Gazelle received contracts for the Swedish market with American jazz yes labels, Avanti had a similar role for record companies within the Eastern Bloc. I will talk more about it later. Uh, but the most obvious reason to start a record company was, of course, what I also included in the title of this paper, to produce and sell political ideology. And here Avanti can be seen as a way of turning ideas into practice. Because when looking at Avanti's releases, one will find that they much reflect the cultural policy debate within the communist movement in the early 1950s, such as using folk music for uh, political pur purposes. I would now like to take a closer look at Avanti's record releases based on the idea of record production as a way of producing political ideology. And for this purpose, I have compiled a discography of about 60 recordings released by Avanti, which includes every recording I've been able to praise in public archives, advertisements in the communist press, and from preserved internal documents such as order lists. One important source of tracing the activities of Avanti has also been the archive of the Swedish security police. Avanti's connections with communist activities and the countries within the Eastern Bloc made the company a potential security risk at least in the eyes of the secret police. I would now like to return to Georgina Born's scheme over the interplay between music and politics. When discussing the Avanti records, one could easily think that the fifth category would, would be the one that stands out, uh, where music is used as a vehicle for a mediator of text. And sure, there are examples of this category especially the very few Swedish recordings that Avanti produced themselves include songs with a more outspoken political lyrics, mainly songs with a peace message. Also the repertoire on some of the foreign recordings, such as anti-fascist songs by, performed by German singer Ernst Busch, could be included in, in this fifth category. Uh, but most of the records rather fall under category number four, the politics of aesthetics. These are records that include folk music, classical music, blues and jazz. Music that in itself not necessarily have a political message, but rather is assigned one depending on what purposes it is to be used for. Uh, most of Avanti's releases consisted of music from the Soviet Union, often in a style that can be described as arranged folk music performed by state orchestras and choirs. It reflects the cultural policy of the Soviet Union in the early 1950s, where composers were encouraged to seek inspiration in folk music and the national cultural heritage in opposition to what was considered as, as decadent Western music, 
And this was the so-called anti-cosmopolitan campaign, whose ideas also was embraced by the Swedish Communist Party. It may then seem a bit strange that Avanti also released jazz, blues, and folk music from the United States, since the Soviet cultural policy also meant a criticism of American music, such as jazz. But among members in the Swedish Communist Youth League, there was an interest in what they consider as music of the American people, as a contrast to the commercial music industry of the United States. And of course, the American folk music movement had been closely connected to the Communist Party of the United States. It also affect that most of the American artists who was released on Avanti were left-wing radicals such as Paul Robson and Pete Seeger, all of whom were blacklisted during the McCarthy era. And here one can assume that the music was assigned a political meaning through the music musicians' political stances as much as what the music expressed, and that the releases also was a kind of solidarity act. Another aspect of the politics of aesthetics can be related to places and events. An important meeting place for the left-wing radical youth of the 1950s were the World Youth Festivals. The festivals, usually arranged in some of the capital within the Eastern Bloc, was supposed to gather the world's youth behind a message of peace and friendship, a message that was supposed to mediate, be mediated through music, dance, and cultural activities. Some of Avanti's record releases consisted of music from the youth festivals. For example, after the fourth festival held in Bucharest in 1953, a record with the Romanian folk dance parody that was marked as the success from the World Youth Festival. And by releasing music from the festivals, it poli its political message could be kept alive among the participants after the homecoming, who in their turn could spread the music and politics further among their friends and family with help of these records. So, before ending, I would like to say a few words about Avanti's contact with foreign record companies. It is not easy to get a grip of these connections, but it's obvious that personal networks were of importance. For example, recordings from the folkways labels in the USA could be licensed, licensed thanks to the US-based Swedish communist Per Eriksson. He was a sailor and union activist who settled down in the United States during the World War II. And through his wife, the artist Edling Cross, he became friends with several of America's most prominent left-wing radical culture workers, including Moses Ash, the legendary founder of folkways um, Ash Records. And this kind of context reminds of the contemporary Swedish yes labels Metronome and Gazelle that I mentioned earlier, a personal network within a rather limited but important group of people. But the vast majority of Avantis records were, were reissues from the state-owned record companies within the Eastern Bloc. And here we'll find a more complex relation of personal context and the politics of the Cold War. Uh, for the Swedish communists, the solidarity, and not to say loyalty, with the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc was fundamental. And the communists put a lot of effort to mediate a positive image of the socialist countries among Swedish citizens. One way of doing this was by introducing culture from these countries. It could be done by arranging cultural activities, such as tours with Soviet folk dance groups and similar. And Avanti's record releases can then be seen as a part of these activities. By releasing music from socialist countries, they tried to mediate a positive image of socialism. And as I mentioned earlier, due to import restrictions, Avanti was needed for record companies within the Eastern Bloc to be able to release music in Sweden. And Avanti does function as a kind of actor in the cultural Cold War. Uh, the communists did also initiate friendship organizations with the socialist countries, such as the Swedish Soviet Union societies and similar. And the leader of Avanti, a young communist named Hasse Engdahl, here he is. He was personally the driving force in organizing friendship associations with both Czechoslovakia and East Germany. And as by coincidence, Avanti reissued recordings from the Czechoslovakian Saprafon label, as well as from Eterna in East Germany. And it depends, of course, on the fact that Hasse Engdahl had personal contacts in these countries, obvious right into the, gov into the government governmental leadership. 
but it may also mean that Avanti released records just support just to support the recording industry in these countries. The Swedish Communist Party initiated a lot of businesses whose only purposes was to help selling products from Eastern Bloc in Sweden. And according to some sources, Avanti was a part of these activities, mainly in support of the GDR. If so, it would explain the many releases with East German music. But the question is how these recordings were perceived outside the communist movement. It's doubtful whether recordings with, for example, East German children's choir attracted the Swedish youth that Avanti was me meant to appeal to originally. So to summarize, Avanti was formed at a time when the number of record buyers increased in Sweden and when some influential independent labels established themselves on the record market in Sweden. Avanti's primary idea was to reach out to the youth with an alternative to the commercial music, music industry. But its activities were also about political and financial support to, to the countries such as East Germany and the Soviet Union. Avanti never received any success on the Swedish record market, mainly for political reasons. The Swedish communist movement was never as marginalized as during the Cold War era of the 1950s when anti-communist ideas dominated the public debate. There are also aesthetic, technolo technological and economic factors to explain the failure of Avanti. American popular music, such as jazz and rock and roll, strengthened its positions as the music of the younger generation. The vinyl record replaced the 78 RPM shellac discs, and the abolished import restrictions for gramophone records in the mid 1950s meant that foreign record companies no longer needed Swedish labels for their releases. The time just wasn't right for Avanti. A conclusion then is that. Record companies sure can be formed for other purposes than strictly commercial or musical for that matter, but they're also dependent on an, on an environment that is receptive to the ideas that are mediated through the records. In other words, one can use record companies to produce political ideology, but there must also be someone willing to buy its message. But time changes. Less than 50 years after Avanti call it a day, the very same ideas of bringing out political message through music and record releases would become an important part of the left-wing movement in Sweden in the late 1960s and 70s. But while this so-called uh, progressive music movement has gained quite a lot of interest from, interest from academic researchers, the fact that the marginalized communist youth of the 1950s tried to realize the very same ideas is something that has been disregarded. And at least in a Swedish context, this fact would in, its own, would in its own be a reason to pay attention to the Avanti label. But for now, and for this conference purposes, that may be another history. Thank you for listening. <laughs>